Hey. Hi there, my name is Cece Val, and I look like a chipmunk today. <laughs> Hello, my name is Cece Bell, and I am back with another inside look at the book, El Defo. So, it's been a long time since we've seen each other. Um, my parents are moving out of their house the very same house that is featured in El Depo. And they have lived there for 44 years and they are ready to live in a smaller house. So it's been a very busy time as I help them move stuff around and go through stuff. And I've found all kinds of crazy little mementos from my childhood. So it's been Pretty emotional, but also very interesting and definitely very busy. So, I know you guys have been really busy too. Um, school has started up and some of you are learning remotely and some of you are in school and some of you are doing a combination of things and it's been super tricky to navigate, but hopefully it is going well for you. So, we are going to talk about chapter 18, but first, I have an incredible surprise for you. I got together on Zoom with the one and only Mike Miller. Yes, Mike Miller, my crush. We got together and it was a little bit awkward sometimes, but it was also a whole lot of fun. Um, you will see that he grew up as I did, but he grew up to become a very cute person and he is still as nice as I remember. So what we will do is I will share with you some of the Mike Miller footage and, um, and then we will come back and talk about chapter 18. So. Without further ado, let me introduce you to the real Mike Miller. There you are! <laughs> oh my gosh, Hi. Mike Miller! I'm here with the one and only, the real Mike Miller from the book El Defo. Hi, Mike! Hello. <laughs> Hi, Cece. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. And um, before we really get into talking about the book, I wanted to ask you um, to just tell us what you do now and where you live. Okay. Uh, well, I live in San Diego, California, and I work for a promotional products company. And uh, it's basically a, an affiliate of Vistaprint, so similar to Vistaprint. Oh, cool. And, okay. yeah, we are owned by the same parent company. And um, so I've been there for five years. I have uh, graphic design by trade. That's what I went to school for. And uh, first job was at a newspaper up in Steamboat Springs, Colorado for a, a tiny little newspaper in a tiny little town, which was my first real experience. Um, I've kind of gone in and out of graphic design and printing all my life. I went back to school for web design, um, video editing, all that fun stuff. <clears throat> so now I'm managing a team of about 250 artists all over the world. Oh, and wow. we, yeah, we put um, basically customer logos onto pro uh, promotional products. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. That's neat yeah. that we sort of ended up doing the same thing in a way because I went to school for graphic design also. Yeah. Yep. And, um, but not, you know, I wasn't very good at it. <laughs> I liked the drawing better than, um, than the design stuff, but I did a lot of freelance design work before I really got deeper into the book. So that's really cool. Right. Well, you're a wonderful artist. It's, oh. uh, you have beautiful, beautiful work. I love the, the drawings that you do. Oh. Um, yeah. And I really, I think that, that if I could have, done it all over, I probably would have liked to have done the same thing. Whereas I, I don't like graphic design either as far as me personally doing it. I like the, you know, I know it very well. So that's why I ended up um, 
you know, I'm, I've gone a, a lot of different directions, but I've always come back to doing the, you know, it's more of the art side of things. Right. So, well, I remember you drawing the Van Halen logo everywhere. <laughs> so now you're working with logos still. <laughs> That's so funny. I, I think I had it on all my notebooks. Oh, totally. And I'm like, I hated Van Halen. I'm like, ooh, Van Halen. The boy I have a crush on, I'm like, Van Halen. <laughs> What a bummer. But um but that's so funny. That's really neat. Um you can always uh become an illustrator anyway. Well, I, I used to doodle, yeah. I mean that's what I just doodled all the time. Right. And I think yeah. that, you know, that that's kind of my uh, my mom and dad probably were the first ones to go, You you should be an artist, you know. They were the ones who kind of saw I doodled a lot. And so I mean when I went to school back then graphic design was not the same thing as it is now yeah uh, absolutely. absolutely it was a lot of yeah a lot of repitograph pencils and pens and cutting out ruby lift and all this old processes that are very archaic today the the technology has really gone a long ways in our in the graphic design field so absolutely absolutely i like all the the cutting and the pasting and the you know figuring yeah. out that way was a little more fun sometimes That's, and yeah our newspaper computer all day yeah. Right. My first job at the newspaper, we would print out stories in four columns and then you have to cut each column out and paste it onto the newspaper. Right. You cut the waxing it, machine. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Wax it, roll it on. Yeah. Uh, very manual. Yeah. yeah. And the great smell. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we took pictures and then we had to develop them, you know, and Ooh. then use a stat camera to enlarge the photos. Yeah. And then uh, develop everything in the dark room all of that oh we man all, yeah we're old aren't we <laughs> <laughs> yeah well that's, it's, yeah, it, it's a good thing though we're oh there. absolutely absolutely yeah. so you have um i know you're married and yes. one of the questions i get is did you marry mike miller and i say no i didn't marry mike miller <laughs> because <laughs> you moved away when we were in 10th grade and um i believe it was 10th grade was that ninth I was fourth, grade? I was, I think, ninth grade. Yeah. Okay. Right, okay. Right before ninth grade. I was 14. 14. Okay. Ninth grade. Yeah. I always thought it was 10. Okay. And so you're married and yes. you have children, I believe. Two boys. Yeah. Two boys. Okay. Yeah. Like 13 and 14 years old. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, are, yeah. They, are they having, a, are they um, home all the time for school? Right now. They are. Everything's uh, fully homeschooled at this point. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, which, you know, it is what it is. We're just kind of 20, 2020 is just, you know, duck, uh, duck and weave and roll with the punches. <laughs> You're telling we me. Were summers you? Uh, in Virginia are, are about the best thing you can possibly have. They are pretty good. They get uh, real humid. And um, yeah. the air gets real heavy, but you know, you've got your lightning bugs and your- um, That's right. Yeah, and, and thunderstorms and all that good stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. So um, we'll get back to the book. And um, so when I started writing the book, I knew that you would be a major part of it, but I hadn't talked to you in you know many, many, many years. I had no idea where you were and so I already knew that I wanted to use your name, but I felt like your full name and partly because um, it felt it was you and it also felt anonymous enough because it's, you know, there's got to be lots of Mike Millers in the world. There's, and there's many, yes. Many, many Mike Millers and it's such a, like the boy next door kind of name. <laughs> so I looked you up on Facebook. I sort of tracked you down and wrote you a note. And that was the first time I think I had ever told you that I had had a crush on you. <laughs> so how awkward was that to receive a note <laughs> like that? It's all good. <laughs> good. <laughs> like, ah. Um, so, so I really appreciate that you let me use your name because yeah. it, just, it just conjures up this, it conjures up you and um just that kind of you know good guy and um you i sent you a book i think after it came out and how did the book 
did you enjoy it when you read it? Yeah. No, yeah. I've, I've got it right here. Absolutely. I, I enjoyed it. And my kids enjoyed it. And my wife enjoyed it. They, you okay. know, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, no, they, um, they definitely were my, you know, it's kind of fun to read a book like that with your, your kids. Uh, you feel like almost like a mini star in their eyes. So no, it, it's, uh, I, I appreciate you making me look so good. I, <laughs> <You're> <laughs> apparently I was a <laughs> <laughs> You're the nicest person. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think, um, what what year did you move to Salem, to Broad Street? Do you think it was about? It was, 70, it was 76, I think, uh, late 76. I, what I remember was it was like, you know, the 200 year anniversary and it was like everything 76. Like Right, yeah. And that's when <laughs> we moved. We moved in 76 the summer of 76 and I always thought you came two years later but you must not have. Did, was I, I was seven but I think so I'm thinking it was after my birthday. Maybe it was um, 27. It, yeah. it, somewhere between yeah I mean it's 76, 77 I really don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quizzing but, you and do you you remember um, G.W. Carver, elementary. Oh, yes. Sure. Yep. Uh, and do you have any recollection of who your very first teacher was at G.W. Carver? I don't remember the name of the teacher, but I do have a small story about moving from Colorado to Virginia. So, so you came from Colorado? Yes. Why did I think you came from Africa? Weren't your parents in the Peace Corps? Well, yes, my parents were in the Peace Corps. I was born in India. You were born in India. That's yeah. it. That's it. Yeah, but okay. I, I wasn't even a year old before they, they moved to Colorado. So oh. my, my first memories are in Colorado. And That's then amazing. I'm, yeah, so we moved from Colorado to Virginia. Okay. And when I first started school, the teacher had a really strong Southern accent. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> and so I came home and I said, Mom, I have no idea what the teacher's saying. <laughs> so she put me, uh, she made me kind of like aware that I need to speak out. And so, you know, it, it all worked out, but it was just kind of funny. Like I came to school not knowing anyone and not knowing what the teacher's saying. So I'm like, oh boy, I'm in trouble here. <laughs> so, oh my gosh. So we had the same problem in a way. You know, not yeah, being I guess so, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I, um, but that's how I kind of made friends. I'm, I'm like, what? What'd she say? <laughs> that's fascinating. So, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. A so same problem. <laughs> I, I'll say that I, I got paired up with JP. Like, JP Powell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that was kind of one of my first friends that I remember. Wow. Uh, and and from there, just a lot of really good friends. You know, we we had, I had such a good. Uh, strong bond with you know uh, all my friends there so it, yeah. it was a it was a very nice time of you know that that whole time back then in Virginia I, I always look back and just nothing but fond memories so that's good that's good yeah. and of course um we all remember your trampoline very yeah. <laughs> I mean you can't have a talk about Broad Street with you know the kids from our generation without yeah. the trampoline being part of that. I mean, you were like the coolest kid on the street <laughs> with a trampoline and you let us use it. <laughs> it yeah. Awesome. yeah. Well, that, that definitely, um, with, and next door we had a, an actual skate half pipe. There was Tom's and then we had the creek. Remember the whole creek in the backyard? Oh, yeah, the creek ran through my yard too. Yeah. There's nothing more fun for a boy than to go looking for um, salamanders and crawdads in a creek totally. like, yeah i would we would spend a lot of time just like walking around up the creek and yeah. looking at the rocks you know you pick up a rock and oh there's a, a crawdad down there so exactly <laughs> you know, exactly I had game. like that's what i mean about the summertime yeah you just leave oh, the yeah. house in the morning and you go all day and then come back at night so it, it was, was a great bad. time it was Bless. easily one of the best places to grow up it doesn't even seem possible now in a way just the way you could leave your house and there was always a game going on. Yeah. And, you know, you run around and find somebody to play with and never, you would come home to get a snack and then go back out. It was just, right. yeah, for your siblings too. 
And right. I think they were about the same ages as my brother and sister. And um, I know my brother, you know, I had my crush on you and my brother had a crush on your sister. <laughs> <laughs> and then most of the girls on the street had a crush on your brother. The older girls, they were all, you know, oh, Steve Miller. <laughs> A handsome family, <laughs> no doubt about it, no doubt about it. Um, do you remember, so the chapter, chapter 16, which is all about this curly pencil I got, do you have any memory of that happening? I, you know, I do remember the curly pencil. I don't remember it being broken and then having someone say, uh, sorry, you know, make someone... I don't know who this person is. Wow. Really? I do remember I the pencil. I don't know who it is because I can't reveal who it is. But yes. he's a neighbor. I'll give you some clues, okay? He was younger than us by about um, three years. He okay. Was, okay, he was Catherine Clater's age. And he lived a few houses north of me. Yeah, I think <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I know who it is. So, okay. so he broke it, and yeah. so you don't remember the breakage and me crying at the bus stop. I mean, no, I just I'm not, you know, I, that's amazing because what's amazing about this story is going to school after that happened, and it was still in the morning, and we had to meet in the bleachers. Everybody sat in the bleachers before we actually went to our classes. And um, normally everybody um, from Broad Street would sit together in a group. But when I got to school, I think my mom took me to school because I missed the bus because I was crying and I ran home. And so I was a little bit late and I decided I'm not, I'm not sitting with the Broad Street kids. I'm humiliated. And so, you know, I'm feeling sorry for myself and I look up and you pushed this young man in front of me and you're like, you better apologize. And I cannot believe you don't remember that because you <laughs> were like, you know, what a nice thing to do. Nobody does stuff like that. So, um, yeah. wow. <laughs> well, I'm really surprised you don't remember that. I mean, it's just like, it was like a turning point in my childhood in a way. Yeah, well, good. I, you know, I, I feel like the Broad Street gang, there's a lot of kids. And Broad Street in itself was a big family, you know? like It was, yeah. We had, I don't remember the t-shirts that okay, everyone Broad had. Street Brats. Broad yeah. Street bums were the dads. Broad Street yeah. broads were the, the moms. And then the Broad Street brats were all the kids. So, you yeah. know, we, every year we would get together and have a big cookout. And, you know, I thought that was really cool that we could get together as a big group, as a neighborhood, and, and really, you know, it was, it was like one big family to me. So, it really was. So I guess you yeah. kind of saw yourself as this older brother figure. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. you, know, you don't treat somebody like right. that. But I exactly. would not, I would have never done anything like that. <laughs> I well. wasn't as nice as you were. But I remember <laughs> your parents. What do you think? Could you even believe it? That is the real Mike Miller. It's so hard to believe that he is a real person, but he is. And we will get to reconnect with him later in this video because he is a big part of chapter 18. And he had a few things to say about what he remembers from that time as well. Chapter 18 begins on page 192, and it starts with the return of the phonic ear. If you remember, the phonic ear was broken by Mr. Potts in PE class and had to be sent away to Silver Spring, Maryland to get fixed. Well, at the beginning of this chapter, it finally returns, and in the book, the implication is that it was mailed back to me. But in real life, my mom had driven all the way to Silver Spring, Maryland, which is about four and a half to five hours away, to pick it up. 
so that I could get it back sooner. So my mom is such a rock star. She is selfless, an amazing person, and her willingness to drive a long, long way to help me get something like the phonic ear is just evidence of what a great mom she is. So she's amazing. But in the book, the mail brought it. And I was very, very, very happy to get it back. I was always happy to get it back because it did break more than once over my childhood. And I was always happy to get it back. But this very first time, I was happier than ever because I had never experienced school without it. So that last panel, when, when I say, oh, my precious, how could I ever, ugh, I can't say it, I'm having trouble. Oh, my precious, how could I have ever been ashamed of you? Life has been a mess without you and the microphone. So that's a little nod to Lord of the Rings. Um, I actually am one of those people who was never able to get through the book. They're kind of long and there's a lot of walking and a lot of feasting and then there's more walking and then there's more feasting and it takes forever. But I do love Gollum and I love the way Gollum would go around, you know, oh my precious with the ring. And my mom actually loves The Hobbit, the sort of, um, what do you call it? A prequel to the Lord of the Rings trilogy. She read The Hobbit when she was pregnant with me. So I've always had a real fondness for Gollum. Oh my precious, oh my precious. I don't think I can do a very good Gollum imitation, but that's my best, my best go. Anywho, page 193, the relief of getting the phonic ear back was so huge that I lost some of the embarrassment I had for it. So in that first panel, you see me walking very jauntily in front of everybody because I don't care as much what other people think. I'm just happy to be able to hear the teacher again. And there's a great song by one of my favorite musicians, Joni Mitchell, called Big Yellow Taxi. And one of the lines is, don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you've got till it's gone. And that perfectly fits here you gain a lot more um, appreciation for things when they're gone, especially if they're things that helped you or were useful or even someone that you loved um, or love. So um, great little line in that song and it really fits how I feel on this page. Uh, life was so much better and so much easier. School was better and so much easier with the phonic ear. So then, um, on page 194 and 195, I really like these pages. And so I'm just going to read them. And part of the reason I want to read them is because this is some of what I will be discussing with Mike in the next little Mike segment. So you can sort of compare and contrast what I have in the book to what Mike remembers. So here we go. My day gets even better when Mrs. Finkelman makes this announcement. As you may know, the sixth graders are giving a presentation called The Wonderful World of Books. It's a big part of our school-wide Reading is Fun campaign. The sixth grade teachers have requested two fifth graders on the smallest side to pose as giant bookends on the stage during the presentation. The first student I've selected is Cece Bell. Really? I get to be on stage and everything? Wow. And the second student I've selected, a boy, is a boy. Mike is kind of short. Could it be? Mike Miller. It is. Cece and Mike, I will let your moms know 
as they'll need to get you some mashing pajamas. What? Mashing pajamas? In front of the whole school? And no way am I on the smallest side. That's Mike talking. And then I think, I don't want to wear pajamas in front of the whole school either. However, Mike Miller in pajamas. This can get embarrassing. So I had a really good time working on these panels and my favorite part to work on for all the book were the parts where I was dreaming about how wonderful Mike Miller was. And the last two panels on page 195, that fits right into those sort of dreamy crush on a boy kind of things that I like to draw. Then on page 196, I get to go to Mike's house with my mom because his mom, Mike's mom, Nancy, has gotten us the pajamas that we need for the play. And it's possible that she ordered them, but it's also possible that she made them. I'm not quite sure. But anyway, this page has caused a lot of confusion because a lot of people think that Kathy, who was on page 132, a lot of people think that Kathy is Mike's mom, but Kathy is Mike's sister, his older sister. And here we see Mike's mom, Nancy, and she looks very different from Kathy. And so some readers have pointed these pages out to me saying, you made a mistake. And um, it's not necessarily a mistake, but the storytelling could have been a little more clear, obviously. But anyway, I go to Mike's house and see the pajamas. And as you can see, I'm kind of excited about the idea of getting to see Mike in those pajamas. But let's see what Mike remembers about this time and about um, how he feels about his mom and his dad and how he thought about those pajamas. So let us check in with Mike now. Other big moment that involves you in the book is um, when we had to play the bookends for that, that presentation. Did you, do you remember that? You've got to remember that. I, I have, yes, the, you know, <laughs> wearing the pajamas. Can't forget that one. Yeah, you can't forget that one. But in the book, I think I made it into, you know, the book isn't absolutely true because, you know, I had to play around with um, like my timeline and some of the details so that I was telling a better story, a more entertaining story in a way. But um, in the book, I have the pageant the or whatever it was, the presentation was, um, about some kind of presentation about books. But I think in real life that it was Christmas related. Yes. Okay, yeah. it was Christmas related because the pajamas that we wore are not like the blue ones in the book. You remember what they were like, they right? They were red. And white, weren't they red and white striped? Yeah, oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they I were think red and so. white striped, yes. And you, I was jealous of yours because you had the footy pajamas that I liked. <laughs> <laughs> and I hated mine because it was all girly and frilly. But I think we were chosen because we were both the shortest people in the class. <laughs> and they wanted a boy and a girl. Yeah. And we were short. And, and we make good, good bookends, apparently. We, yes. <laughs> but that was your parents to... being exceptionally nice, especially your mom. And... Um, and just really funny and cool. I mean, your mom is cool. <laughs> She's one of my favorite adults on Broad Street. Um, but I think, I'm sure she taught you guys some good manners and how to be, she, how to be good people. And Yeah, yeah, my, my parents, you know, can't complain. So. Absolutely, absolutely. Good yeah, I, yeah absolutely. They, they were, they were, um, you know, having four kids, I can't imagine I have two, but having four is like <laughs> a lot of work. 
um, and they definitely didn't make it seem too difficult that I remember. So, right. Yeah. 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 Wasn't that interesting? I thought it was interesting too. And now we're on page 197 and the day of the presentation has arrived. In that first panel, you'll see the loudspeaker above Mrs. Finkelman's head and then sort of under it, you see all these garbled words. And by now, you probably know exactly what those garbled words mean when you see them in this book because they come up quite a bit. And in this instance, the garbled words are there because any time the principal or a teacher or the secretary made an announcement over the loudspeaker, I had no idea what that person was saying because I couldn't see their mouths. They weren't in the room with me. It was over the loudspeaker. So I always had to ask people, well, what was that? What did that person just say? And they even called bus numbers over the loudspeaker. And I missed my bus a few times because I wasn't paying attention and I didn't ask somebody to help me. And so who knows what bus number was called. So that's why the garbled words are there. And in that second panel, Mike says, that's us. You ready? And then I think, us? Oh, does Mike think of us? Mike and me? Us? Oh, yes, I'm ready. So I always thought that was pretty goofy. And then we walk down the hallway, and in the third panel, you will see that I am able to hear Mrs. Finkelman as we walk down the hallway. And it was very important for me to establish this here because, or rather, to establish that I could hear her while I was walking to the restroom because I'm going to hear her later in this chapter. So it works both ways. If Mrs. Finkelman is, in, is somewhere other than the classroom and I'm in the classroom, I could hear her, but it could, I keep messing up today. I didn't warm up properly. I need to warm up next time. Anywho, the microphone works both ways. If Mrs. Finkelman is not in the classroom and I'm in the classroom, I can hear her. And also, if she is in the classroom and I'm somewhere else, I can still hear her. So it worked all the time that way. And I'm just trying to show that I'm hearing Mrs. Finkelman here because I'm going to hear her later in a much more important moment. And then in the final panel of page 197, I always like this panel. Um, Mike and I are in our pajamas and I'm like, wow. But what's also funny is that we are standing in front of the restroom doors and one door says boys and one door says girls. And I liked how that sort of underscored the fact that this is a boy and girl romance, at least in my eyes, not in Mike's eyes, but definitely in mine. And the GW Carver hallways that you see in panels three and four on this page, they were really cool. Um, these old yellow bricks that were super, super shiny. Like they went through and polished them and then painted some kind of lacquer over them. But I always really liked those yellow bricks. So I was happy to feature them in the book. Um, let's see. So now we are on page 198 and the presentation has begun and the sixth graders are singing and there's some more garbled words here coming out of the sixth grade choir because once again I'm not facing them so I have no idea what they're singing and even if I am watching somebody's mouth when he or she sings it's still hard to understand because um, pe people talk and their mouths do one thing people sing and their mouths do a different thing and it's so it's really hard to lip read singing in general. 
So, the presentation is about books in the book, in the book El Defe. But as you may recall from my conversation with Mike, this was actually a Christmas presentation. And it took place in the school gym. Many schools used their gym as an auditorium and GW Carver Elementary School was set up the same way with a stage in the gym. And believe it or not, my mom, who was a nurse, she started GW Carver's very first um, school nurse program. And so she was the very first nurse at GW Carver and her office was backstage. And so anytime somebody got hurt in PE, she was very accessible because the kid would just go backstage within the gym and get her to help them. Anyway, um, you see me in this page, on page 198, that I overhear Mrs. Finkelman peeing. <laughs> and I start laughing. And I definitely heard her during this presentation. And I probably laughed. But I don't think that Mike really did notice for real. And then on page 199, the presentation ends and we change back into our regular clothes and Mike is like, well, what's going on? What were you laughing about up there? And I really don't think that that actually happened. But in the book on page 200, um, I have to make a decision to whether or not to tell Mike about what I can hear. And so we see, um, I sound drunk today, don't I? <laughs> but, so well, uh, <laughs> I don't know what my problem is, but we will get through this together. Yes, we will, we will. So, bah, back on page 200, this is the first time that El Defo interacts with me directly. And um, it's a really important moment because this is sort of the start of me merging with my superhero alter ego, El Defo, me becoming that superhero. And it starts with the fact that El Defo can have an actual conversation with me. And so it's a conversation where El Defo is giving this pep talk, you know, go ahead, tell him, tell him what you can do. He's going to be impressed. And so this is definitely made up, but um, obviously sometime around third grade, I did start to get more comfortable sharing little bits of information about the phonic ear with others. And so anyway, El Defo does give me that boost I need in the book. And then I do share my superpowers with Mike. So let's listen to Mike and me in our con another conversation and see what Mike remembers or doesn't remember about this period. Did it work? Do you have any recollection of how you knew that the microphone that I used was um, had a had a long range? Did I ever tell you? Or I think that we somehow there was a um, an aha moment that you could hear the teacher. Yeah. I, I don't have the exact specific day or, or you know like but it was miss eichelman where it was like down in the basement right right exactly so she had to go like down steps and i think there was something at some point where i knew you knew and i found out and i was like oh wow yeah That's right <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then i know isn't mike the best i will be sharing a lot more of our conversation with him in the last three videos of this series because he is in all the other chapters of this book. And so the final page of this chapter, 202, it's me being very excited that 
Mike has been so receptive about how cool the phonic ear and the microphone are. He's so excited about it because kids love technology, right? And he's so excited that he invites me over to his house, basically so we can do an experiment on the phonic ear and the microphone. But he doesn't tell me that quite yet. But I am just over the moon that he is inviting me to his house. And I think to myself, oh, it's a date, my first date with Mike Miller. And so that's where the chapter ends. And we have so much more fun footage coming up with Mike and just in general. So I hope everybody is staying safe and well and a special shout out to all of our friends on the West Coast and on the Gulf Coast. You have been dealing with some really scary um, weather conditions and fires and all sorts of scary things. So I hope that you are managing to stay safe and that you find some nice, quiet, peaceful moments to grab a good book now and then and take a little break and escape from scary stuff like that. And that goes for everybody. I hope you're all finding some really good books to read to help you get through some of these challenging times. So anyway, thank you so much for joining me and my apologies for being a little bit out of it today. Who knows? You never know. Um, but bear with me and we will have a really good time when we do chapter 19 the next time. All right, take care. Bye.